Hey everyone, big news this past week. The federal government just announced some massive updates to the mortgage rules here in Canada. And if you're thinking about buying a home here in Toronto, whether it's your first or you're looking to upgrade, these changes could have a serious impact on the market and on your next move. In today's video, I'm gonna break down exactly what these changes mean for you, how they'll impact your mortgage payments, and most importantly, if now is the right time to make your move. You'll definitely want to stick around for this one because while one of these changes could be a real trap for buyers, the other opens up a great opportunity you definitely don't want to miss. So let's dive right in. What's up everyone? My name is Fadi Nakla. I'm a real estate broker right here in Toronto. And if you haven't already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all things Toronto real estate. Plus, if you're at any point in this video, you do have any questions or are thinking about buying or selling a home here in Toronto or the GTA and want to know more about how these changes could affect your decision, feel free to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. All my contact information in the description below and I'd be more than happy to help. All right, so let's jump right into the first major change. Starting December 15th, the federal government is increasing the price cap for insured mortgages from 1 million to 1.5 million. That's a pretty significant jump, especially in a market like Toronto, where home prices are on average well over $1 million. So what does that mean for you? Well, in simple terms, if you're looking at a home that falls between one and 1.5 million, you can now qualify for a government backed insured mortgage with a down payment of less than 20%. Now, before this change, if the home was priced above 1 million, you are required to put down at least 20% of the purchase price. So for a $1.5 million home, you need to put down at least 300,000 as a down payment. But now with these new rules, you can buy that same $1.5 million home with a down payment of just $125,000, which is only around 8%. That's a huge difference. And on paper, it seems like it's going to open doors for more buyers in that price range, especially in a hot market like Toronto. But here's the catch. Taking on a larger mortgage also means more debt, meaning your monthly payments are going to be high, like really high. And while this move makes it easier to enter the market, you'll still need to be sure that those payments fit into your budget. So here's my take on this. While this change might increase activity in that one to $1.5 million range, I don't believe it's going to have a huge impact on the market overall. Why? Because even though the down payment is smaller, you still need to qualify for a mortgage that size, which is usually the challenge. Let's go right into an example. If you're buying a $1.5 million home and you're only putting down the new minimum, which is around 8%, that means you're looking at a mortgage of about $1.375 million. And with today's average interest rates, which are around 45 to 5%, you're looking at mortgage payments closer to $8,000 a month. I mean, that's a serious financial commitment. And that's before we even start talking about things like property taxes, utilities, or even just general upkeep. So sure, this change might help some people who are already looking in that $1.1 to $1.2 million range get closer to their dream home, especially if they're already close with their down payment, but not quite there. But Realistically, for most buyers, qualifying for a mortgage of that size is still going to be a major struggle. Let's face it, regardless of who you are, $8,000 a month in mortgage payments is a big chunk of money. You'd need a pretty high household income to make something like this work comfortably. So I wouldn't expect a flood of new buyers suddenly entering this price bracket just because the down payment requirement is lower. Like I said, it might help a little bit of people who are right on the edge, but for most of us and really a large segment of the population, this isn't going to be a product that's really accessible for most people. I also want to talk about another side to this change as well for just a second. You know, these types of changes sound like they're designed to help more people enter the housing market. And while that's great in theory, there's always a trade-off. And the trade-off here is by making it easier for buyers to take on larger mortgages with smaller down payments, it actually increases the chances of people overextending themselves. And here's where things get tricky. We have to remember that this is a government insured product. So 
if homeowners start to default on these larger mortgages, it's the taxpayers, people like you and me, who are on the hook for covering those losses. That's why I think it's so important for buyers to really take a close look at their long-term financial picture before diving into something like this. Any financial hiccup like a change in employment, unexpected expenses or life events, or an increase in interest rates, which we've just seen happen aggressively these last few years, could put you as a buyer at risk of falling behind on payments and then defaulting on your mortgage. Sure, the lower down payment makes home ownership more accessible in some ways, but is it worth it if you're stretching yourself too thin in the long run? So while this policy aims to make home ownership more accessible, and maybe that was the intention of the policy, I would hope, my overall sentiment on this change is that it might increase activity a tiny bit in this price range, but it's not likely to significantly shift the market or make home ownership drastically more accessible for most Canadians. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this in the comments. Do you think this rule change is a good move? Do you think it's going to shift our market at all? Or is it just adding more to the risk? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. All right, let's move on to the second big update that, in my opinion, could really benefit first time home buyers, and that's the introduction of 30 year amortizations for insured mortgages. Now, this is something I think could actually make an impact and can make a big difference for people who are struggling with high monthly payments or for people who are struggling to get into the market. So if you're not familiar, before this change, insured mortgages, meaning any mortgage where you're putting down less than 20%, were capped at a 25 year amortization period. That meant that you had to pay off your mortgage within 25 years. Now, with this new rule, first time home buyers can spread those payments out over 30 years instead. Now, just to clarify, 30 year amortizations have already been available for buyers who put down 20% or more, whether you're a first time buyer or not. What's new here is that this 30 year option is now being extended to first time buyers who are putting down less than 20%. This change is huge because it means those buyers who might be working with smaller down payments can now spread their mortgage payments over a longer term, making the monthly costs a little bit more manageable. This is a big change, which I think will actually have quite the impact on the market, especially in expensive markets like Toronto, where affordability is a major challenge. For a lot of first time home buyers, it's not necessarily the home prices that's the biggest barrier. It's usually qualifying for a mortgage that size and the monthly payment as well. Spreading those payments out over a longer period of time can give buyers the breathing room they need to finally enter the market. Let's look at an example. If you were to take out a $500,000 mortgage with a 25 year term, you'd be looking at monthly payments of around $2,800 per month at today's rates of around 4.5%. But with a 30 year term, those payments could drop down to around $2,500 per month. Now, I know what you're thinking. $300 might not seem like a huge difference, but for someone who's just starting out, it could be the difference between being able to buy a home now or having to wait a few more years. Now, yes, you will pay more interest over the life of the loan with a 30 year mortgage. But here's the thing for a lot of people, the trade-off is worth it. The alternative is not being able to buy at all. Plus, most first-time home buyers don't end up staying in their first home forever. Realistically, they'll build equity, save a little bit more money, and then when the time comes to move up, they can use that equity to upgrade to their next home where they can choose to go with a 25-year term instead if they'd like. So to sum it all up, these are the two major changes that were announced by the federal government and will come into effect December 15th of this year. We have the increase in the insured mortgage cap from one to $1.5 million, and then the introduction of 30 year amortizations for insured mortgages. Both are designed to help more people enter the housing market, but with the first change, you have to be careful not to fall into that trap and stretch yourself too thin again, unless you're already really close financially to that home that you really want. And then for the second change, if you're a first time home buyer, this is definitely something I would take advantage of. And I think it's definitely something 
that will increase activity in that portion of the market. If you're unsure about how these changes affect you or if now is the right time for you to make a move, I'm here to help. Book a call with me using the link in the description below and I'll walk you through everything you need to know and make sure you're making the right decision for your situation. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of my future updates on the Toronto real estate market. And I'll see you guys on the next video.